Greetings Internet, I am Ken from the Computer Clan, and today on Tidbytes, I want to show you what Microsoft is doing with the new Fluent Design System. So we're going to take a look at the new UI for the Windows 10 Fall Creators update, and pick it apart. I'm actually here today with Computer Clan member Brent. Hello. And we have actually gone through this video that Microsoft posted, which we'll link up right here. And you could take a look at that for yourself, but instead of you having to pause all the time and scrub frame by frame through all of these different images they show, we decided to do the work for you. And by we, of course, Ken means myself. Shut your face. Anyway, we're going to pick this apart for you, so let's take a look. So let's start small and take a look at this one feature called Timeline. Now, the feature is kind of cool, but we're going to talk more about just the interface stuff right now. So if you look carefully, you'll notice there's these people circles in the taskbar, and there's a new arrangement for the icons in the system tray. And also, the taskbar is not only transparent or translucent, it actually has more of a frosted glass look, so anything beneath it gets blurred out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole frosted glass thing is a new thing that they're rolling out with the fluent design scheme and as we get through more screenshots you'll see more and more of that on things such as windows and panels that pop out it's kind of like the ios interface and arrow and material design had a baby that's kind of what fluent is it's a mix of a lot of things and it's really gorgeous but we'll get into that Right, so let's take a look at the context app, for example. You can see there's this frosted glass here, which against the wallpaper here just blurs it out. And when you hover your cursor over buttons, there's like this nice little glow going on here. And everything just looks really, everything actually looks like a window. It looks like a pane of glass, which kind of goes back to the arrow days, except more frosty. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that they do demo here specifically, there's a whole uh, video where Microsoft talks about design. And they mention this as being light. So as you move your cursor around, you'll actually notice that these letters get illuminated. So the nearest edges, you can see they start to fade away as the mouse cursor moves mm. away with them or even fade in as it gets closer to them. And then, of course, the tile that you're hovering over has this nice little glow effect to it. Subtle little touches that probably look even cooler when they're beneath your finger on a touchscreen. Because again, this Windows is like a hybrid system. It's designed for not just desktops and laptops, but tablets and phones as well. So here we see more of that glass being used. And this is actually inside of a new app called Story Remix, which is kind of like Windows Movie Maker on crack. And actually, it kind of does some advanced digital compositing techniques as well. What's interesting about it is the fact that Microsoft is not making a new app here. They're actually extending the functionality of the existing Photos app. So uh, you'll see here that there, we have an image where there's um, Explore, Create, and Folder. So Explore is very much like the default view in the Photos app that we have now. It's pretty much just a list of all the photos that you have grouped by dates. And you can even see uh, collections that the Photos app creates for you. Rather than them being in a separate collections tab, they're just at the top for you now. But then this create tab is where things get really interesting because that is where you can plop in all of your images, add some music, and it'll go ahead and compile them into a video for you. Kind of like Movie Maker and making home movies, but um, much nicer, a much more modern workflow, simple to follow. And I should probably clarify that even though this is the Photos app, you can do a lot more than just photos. As it stands right now, the Photos app also allows you to view videos. And you better believe that you can be able to put videos into this timeline here as well. So here are some more conceptual images. This is where things get a little more quirky in the video because it looks like we're seeing stuff that might be simulated from a virtual reality environment with, let's say, the Microsoft HoloLens. Mm-hmm. So we have three different images for you here on it. So you can see how these apps would uh, work together whenever you position them in different locations physically. So you can really move things around and find a workflow that works best for you. Yeah, this looks very HoloLensy. I mean, as you keep flipping through this stuff, these 3D objects, which still have similar Windows controls like minimize, maximize, close, and the hamburger button, and like shadows and all this cool stuff, a little bit of glass even. Mm -hmm. It looks like they have like 3D depth to them like maybe they're supposed to be manipulated in a virtual reality space yeah and you even have other 3d models like mountains and pie charts and <laughs> cocks and calendars. shadows oh man just 
shadows, drop shadows, like actual, like almost look like they're ray traced, you know? And, and if we keep moving on here, this is another most likely a conceptual image from the video. And they're really demonstrating how depth is used inside of Fluent, but this is potentially how a calendar application could look like. We're not 100% sure what this could actually be though, because mm -hmm. it's so macro, it's so zoomed in. Typically HoloLens does organize things into windows, just like you'd expect on windows. But this sort of seems more like an edgeless immersive design here where you could have perhaps maybe even entire wall just have this user interface overlaid on top of it so rather than it being in a window it's just kind of part of your wall your calendar on a timeline here in fact we're going to even open this up to the audience a little bit how do you think that this view would work because looking at this this is a very new design for us and we're not 100 percent sure how to piece this together for ourselves and again, this could be just for the sake of the video, like, oh, things are moving, it's cool. It's just all, you know, motion graphics simulated. But yeah, we want to open this up to you guys. In fact, for any of these images, if you have any input on what Microsoft could be planning with Fluent, or if, if you have any thoughts, let us know in the comments below. Please, yes. You're going to notice there's some inconsistencies with certain things. In fact, in this short video, you see a bunch of different versions of taskbars and the Explorer and a bunch of different things, and you'll probably notice throughout this Tidbytes presentation. But let's take a look at what's going on here. So we see a mail client, and it looks like we have an attachment that's like popping out. Again, I don't know if that's just simulated for the sake of the video, or if you can actually like zoom things in like this. I, I almost get the impression that there's a mouse cursor that we're not seeing. Like yeah, the screenshot kind of misses it, but whenever you hover over these, I'm just picturing like it zooms in as you hover over them. Yeah, certainly. And again, you're seeing those typical Windows things like the vertical sidebar, the hamburger menu. Everything is pretty much neutrals and line art iconography with an accent color. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're seeing significantly more like drop shadow on this like window simulation here. And yeah, yeah. One and, thing, I mean, we oh. don't see the frosted glass that is promised in fluency. Yeah. So this is, might be a little bit of an earlier screenshot from a developer in progress as they were working on windows in progress certainly this is rather interesting to me because as i talk to other people talking about the current design language that microsoft has in place one thing that comes through for people who don't like it what they immediately jump to is the conclusion that it is way too flat and so microsoft is doing uh several different things here in regards to trying to bring some depth into this design language and we're seeing one execution of that here with the drop shadows and as we go on through screenshots we'll see other ways that they're trying to bring depth into fluency mm -hmm. and also i just love noticing that farewell is spelt wrong so it's farewell so farewell everybody <laughs> anyway people are probably going like ken brent just get to the taskbar already yes the taskbar Let's the taskbar. Let, let's talk about how it's the exact opposite color, and there's also no transparency on it. Right. Also, another thing that's especially worthy of note is how monochrome everything is. At least in this screenshot. Again, there's like some inconsistency throughout the video, but mm -hmm. that's probably, mm -hmm. again, just to show the concepts, and we're just picking it apart. And it's possible that this some of this might have never even made it to a Windows build at all and was just assembled totally. entirely in Photoshop. We don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, it's worth noting that the system tray area looks a lot cleaner just by default. It, it looks like the clock and calendar also are presented differently. They're not stacked vertically. They're not stacked vertically. There's no notification center button. There's a lot more of a margin between these items, probably for touch friendliness. This is one shot we want to look at in regards to the taskbar, but let's kind of just do a side-by-side -side comparison of some other taskbar iterations that we see. So on the left, you'll see we do have that monochrome still. With Now we have open apps that are highlighted in an accent color, and we have the translucency back, but not the frosted glass. And you'll notice another thing is there's like a person button in the middle of the taskbar whatever that might be used for. Now, what we know Microsoft is doing is they are allowing users to pin people to their taskbar. But the way it's currently presented in builds of Windows 10 for Windows insiders who are on the fast ring is it puts them into the right after your system tray icons. But in this 
build or in this mock design mock-up whatever this is mm-hmm. i don't know that this is an actual build of windows <laughs> But what we're seeing here is potentially those pins being moved to the center of the taskbar. Yeah, and maybe it's a setting. You can pin it in different places. And another thing, Actually. yeah, another thing I am noticing here is you see this new Explorer window in the background. It's a, an inactive window. So it looks like it's semi-transparent. You see the wallpaper soaking through, but the mail client is the active window. So it goes opaque. I can't see through it. So maybe that's another thing they're experimenting with, which... That probably wouldn't fly in my book. Let's take a look at this other taskbar in this other concept shot from the video. So now we have a lot of the same stuff. The clock looks like it's in a thinner typeface, but the icons are now like center aligned at the bottom in the taskbar. It looks nice. It does look elegant. My initial impression is my initial impression is to hate that, but just the way I'm seeing it presented solely here. It looks really nice. I might actually be able to get used to that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I hope they go for something kind of like that. So that's a little comparison of some of the different taskbars we're seeing. And, you know, we were talking about the file explorer earlier. Well, there's a still shot of that as well that popped up in the video. And you'll Mm -hmm. notice we have that drop shadow with the sidebar thing again, just like in that mail client. And we have our like our places here in the sidebar, and then we have our icon view, our grid view, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, this looks radically different than the the current Win32 one. Again, we are seeing depth come into the user interface here Mm -hmm. with that shadow peering onto the sidebar there. But again, we're not seeing any use of translucency or frosted glass effects. Right. So it seems to be on and off with this video and also we see bad kerning if you look at the name in that menu there, i noticed that too yeah that i want to die but anyway no you you want to know what makes me want to die <laughs> the fact that this window cannot die where the hell is the close button oh yeah you see that's the weird thing it's like again it's conceptual the it window seems... controls are absolutely gone it's yeah. been replaced with the uh, yeah the icon that's always in the left side of the window has migrated to the right completely taking over your ability to do the three main thing that people do with windows in windows <laughs> right so those window controls look like they're gone uh it looks borderless uh, i don't think this is a practical design and again ui is very different from ux but it, there are <laughs> things about this that i do like looks but pretty. it feels yeah it looks very clean and pretty i would kind of like to see this get used but at the same time I would not like to see this get used. Right. So now let's just take a quick look at a side-by-side comparison here. And as you can see, the arrangement of the sidebar and this other Explorer is quite a bit different. And it uses accent colors to highlight what like current folder you're in, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Kind of like how the mail client seems to be working too. And which... the mail client actually works pretty similarly in Windows today. So to see the file Explorer adopt something similar to the design concept of the mail client we see here as well as having said mail client be similar to what we see with Windows now, this would be a much nicer shift for the file explorer to take. It would be a much more familiar way of implementing a modern file explorer while still having it be congruent with the rest of the design scheme that Microsoft seems to be rolling out with Fluent. Right, and we're going to be talking a lot more about this on Tidbytes and in other series in the future as we get more information and as we get closer to that September release date, I believe is the month that this Windows 10 Fall Creators Update will be coming out. So subscribe to stick around and you'll get some more information from us on Windows 10 and other tech topics. In the meantime, though... While everything is still up in the air as for what Microsoft could potentially be doing for their final release of Fluent, let us know in the comments below which one of these design concepts you like the most, or maybe you hated them all. Let us know what you'd like to see Microsoft actually do to make a good design. Right. And I think they're in a pretty good direction, but again, this video, it was just supposed to be flashy, and it shot a lot of concepts by really quick. Again, watch it if you haven't. Um, You know, maybe you'll see it a little bit differently after we slowed down and actually looked at a bunch of the frames frozen in time and picked it apart. Mm -hmm. So that's all I got, guys. Brent, are you good? I'm good. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the not-too-distant future.